just a little disclaimer, this video is not meant to scare you at all. It is just to bring to your attention some potentially problematic issues with the use of aerosol dry shampoo so that you can be informed to make a decision that is best for you and also to show you that you do have options. So at this point, I have tested out a lot of dry shampoos. So I consider myself like a dry shampoo connoisseur. And because of this, I find myself spending a lot of my free time researching dry shampoo, which I'm sure not a lot of people do. Stop it. Get some help. But anyway, this research has led me to some pretty interesting information regarding the use of aerosol dry shampoo. And so I wanted to make this video because I think you should know about it. So in order for the powder to spray out of the can, aerosol dry shampoos use liquefied petroleum gas or LPG. So these gases are used as a repellent to spray the product out of the can and onto your hair. LPG often consists of a combination of butane, isobutane, and propane. And that's most likely how you would see it on your ingredient label. So what are the problems with LPG? Well, for one, they're highly flammable, so you might end up with your hair on fire, you know, no big deal. And while these gases don't damage the Earth's ozone layer, they do contribute to ground level ozone or smog, <coughs> which can cause breathing problems for people and it's just you know, not good for the environment. But they also could be harmful for your health. Both butane and isobutane are on Made Safe's banned list of ingredients and they both get a score of a six on EWG's Skin Deep database. Butane, propane, and isobutane are all known irritants, meaning they can cause or worse than respiratory issues as well as asthma. Exposure to these gases have been linked to symptoms such as headaches, nausea, mood swings, and difficulty breathing. And the two main forms of LPG exposure are inhalation and skin contact, both of which you'll be getting when using aerosol dry shampoos. Now you might be thinking, are the ingredients in dry shampoo so harmful if used in small quantities? And no, probably not. But we also have to think about our exposure to these gases as a whole, right? Because we're not just getting them in our dry shampoo. We're getting them in basically any aerosol product that you're using, and it doesn't even have to be a beauty product. It can also be our air fresheners that we're using or a cleaning product that we're using. And they're also found in a lot of our in-home appliances. They can be found in stoves, heaters, fireplaces. Hey, if you are finding this video helpful at all, please do me a favor and give this video a like so that we can help get it out to more people. Thank you, love you. And I think that most of us are spraying these aerosols in places like our bathroom, which are usually smaller spaces with very little ventilation. I am in like a cloud of dry shampoo right now. God, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. We also have to keep in mind that when we are spraying these gases in the air, we are not the only ones that are gonna be breathing in these chemicals. It's going to be anyone who is in the surrounding area. So you, any family member, your children, your pets, anybody can be breathing in these gases as well. We're spraying these gases directly onto our scalp, onto the skin, and your scalp has an absorption rate of anywhere from four to 10 times higher than other parts of your body. And so we're just letting this dry shampoo sit on our scalp for one, two, maybe three days. And having these chemicals stay on the skin for a longer period of time can cause irritation. And even though there are no studies linking aerosol dry shampoo directly to hair loss, we know that irritation of the scalp and the hair follicle can cause the hair follicle to weaken, and this could potentially lead to hair loss. So if you're using these aerosol dry shampoos on a regular and consistent basis, you might wanna think about the amount of exposure you're getting to these gases, even if the risk is small using them alone. But that is not all. In 2021, Procter & Gamble, who is the parent company to a lot of popular brands such as Pantene Pro-V, Herbal Essence, and Waterless, recalled 32 aerosol dry shampoo and conditioners for toxic benzene contamination. Benzene is a known carcinogen. Exposure to benzene can occur by inhalation orally and through the skin and can result in cancers including leukemia, 
blood cancer of the bone marrow, and blood disorders which can be life-threatening. The company went on to say that while benzene is not an ingredient in any of our products, our review showed that unexpected levels of benzene came from the propellant that sprays the product out of the can. So what's important about this is the only reason that this carcinogen was found was because Procter & Gamble did a voluntary test on their products. The tri shampoo that was recalled by Procter & Gamble did not purposely contain benzene. So the only reason that this carcinogen was found in their products was because of a voluntary test. Had they have not done that voluntary test, we would not know. So are y'all thinking when I'm thinking like, we don't have testing for all aerosol dry shampoo so we cannot rule out that they are not contaminated with benzene as well so this could potentially be an issue with other aerosol dry shampoo brands that we just don't know because they haven't been tested i just find that pretty concerning <laughs> Now, if all of that wasn't enough already, let's talk money. If you've ever thought that you go through a can of dry shampoo really fast, you're not crazy. The amount of liquefied petroleum gases it takes to propel the product out of the can is a lot. We're talking 60 to 90% of your bottle of aerosol dry shampoo is made up of propellant gases. So that means you are only getting 10 to 40% of the actual product itself. So basically we are buying gas in a bottle that could potentially be harmful for our health and the environment. But the good news, there are alternatives. Yay! Aerosol dry shampoo is just one form of dry shampoo. We still have aerosols, little, lesser known, less popular sister, powder. Oh. Now I'm not saying that all powder dry shampoo is uh, considered good for you or doesn't have harmful ingredients. There's still gonna be some that you should steer clear of, but for the most part, they are gonna have cleaner and fewer ingredients. And because they're powder, they're not gonna contain any of the propelling gases. And also, they're gonna last way longer because when you're buying powder dry shampoo, you're actually buying that product. When you buy aerosol dry shampoo, you're only getting like 10% of the actual product. And even better news, if you have oilier hair already, it's actually recommended that you use a powder dry shampoo because it does a better job at oil control. So my friends, you know what this means. We are about to embark on a powdered dry shampoo journey. <clears throat> journey. So if you are not already subscribed, please make sure that you are doing that. Hit the notification bell so that you're always notified whenever I upload a new video. I already have a list of ones that I want to try out. I want you to put some that you want to see me try out down in the comment section. And if you found the information in this video as important as I did, please make sure that you're hitting the like button so this video gets out to more people. We can spread the word. And if you have a friend, a family member, or someone who is a dry shampoo addict, we all know at least one. Share this video with them. Let them know. Be a friend. I love you all so much. Thank you for hanging out with me. I hope you have an amazing week and I will see you in my next video. Bye. So at this point in my... So if you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so that you're notified when hit the bell icon. So these... So if you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Stop. And because of this... So when inhaled, these gaskets get... Stop. Both butane and isobutane are on made safe scope. Are these gases have been linked to symptoms such as nausea. The propellant that sprays the cans. So for one of my, so for, so for one of my, and so. Mm -hmm. that if used in small quality, probably not using. As I was researching for a previous video, um, so as I was, so as I was doing.
But you might be thinking, are the ingredients that harmful? 